Hi everyone, this is the daily video update for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. My name is the, Rev is the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. Today is Thursday, July 16th, 2020. One of the fun parts about doing this uh, each day, now for almost four months, um, has been the conversation uh, that it's, that, that's been a part of these updates. I get questions either on the YouTube channel or via email about something that I've said, and, and it's been a way to engage uh, the congregation with some really interesting meaty theological questions. Um, one of them came in about a week ago as a comment on this, this YouTube um, channel from our member Frank Edler, um, and I'm just going to read his, his question, which is really interesting, um, and then see, uh, see if I can take a crack at it. So Frank writes this. Hi Oscar, I've been enjoying your daily updates, especially the last one where you identified yourself as a universalist, a Unitarian, and an agnostic in that order, I believe. My question to you is related to agnosticism and theism. I used to teach Introduction to Religion and other religion-related courses and used both a broad and a narrow definition of theism, atheism, and agnosticism. The narrow definitions briefly run along traditional lines. Theism is the belief in a supreme being who created the universe. Atheism is the denial of such, that such a being exists. And agnosticism is the position that we do not know, or perhaps can never know, whether such a be supreme being exists or does not exist. And then, th this is Oscar, I would add to that definition that another piece of agnosticism may be that we, we do not know the nature of a supreme being. Back to Frank. If we expand the definitions so that theism is the belief that there is a larger meaning to the universe apart from myself, so a denial of solipsism, atheism would be then the denial of any meaning to the universe apart from myself, and agnosticism would be the belief that it is unknowable whether or not there is a larger meaning to the universe apart from myself. My quest, Frank's question is the following. Is theism in the broad sense compatible with agnosticism in the narrow sense? Would you view yourself as a theist in the broad sense? Thanks, Frank. So this is a really great question. Um, and it's one that's probably best answered uh, with a bottle of wine in a, sem uh, a seminar room somewhere. But given that this is the form that we're in, um, let's take a crack at it. So Frank's definitions make sense. I'm going to print that whole um, uh, question as, as part of the uh, description of this video. So the first question is, can you be agnostic in the narrow sense, so not knowing whether a supreme being exists, and theistic in the broad sense, believing that there is a larger meaning apart from yourself? I would say absolutely. That's where much of humanism lands, but it's a little more complicated than that. Nietzsche famously observed that God is dead. But what's often missed in the cultural memory of that phrase is that Nietzsche was at best uh, conflicted about God's death. In Thus Spoke the Zarathustra, he writes about humanity as murderers who, in killing the idea of God, have killed the source of meaning in many lives. And so one of the central questions of modernity, then, is to figure out if we can live lives of meaning outside of a traditional conception of God. This is a, a question for, I suppose, Western modernity over the last 200 years. And most of us, um, if pressed, would probably say something like, well, the meaning of life is what we make of it, right? And by this we understand meaning as an individual thing. I get a sense of meaning out of my work. You might find meaning in your family relationships. My wife finds meaning in dance. And indeed, that's how I first read Frank's question. But that's not actually the question, is it? Given agnosticism in the narrow sense, which we could simplify to say an absent God, is there a larger meaning to the universe apart from myself? And that's a real question. Jürgen Moltmann, uh, the, the German theologian that I've been spending a lot of time with this spring, um, wrote that no life can be understood from its 
own standpoint alone. As long as it lives, it exists in living relationship to other lives, and therefore, in contexts of time and with perspectives of hope. It is these that constitute, in the first place, a living being's unique vitality, openness, and capacity for communication, and I would say meaning as well. Theology is relational. On, on some level, just about any kind of meaning-making we undertake involves people outside of the individual. So my work gives me meaning because of relationship. Art, dance, is a conversation between the artist and the audience. Family is relational above all. But even this isn't really Frank's question, I don't think. The, the question is this, is there a meaning, capital M, to the universe outside of humanity that we can discern? And answering that question is the challenge of a lifetime, or at least longer than this five minute long video. As a side note, another uh, question that I got last night was asking how my Doctorate of Ministry studies were going. Um, this, this is how they're going. Um, I've started delving into German theology, and I'm afraid I'm going to inflict it on all of you uh, every once in a while. It's Thursday night, uh, so uh, I will see you in worship in a few hours. Uh, for those of you at the Unitarian Church of Lincoln, there is a link to the Zoom call for worship tonight in your e-blast that you're getting at 4 o'clock this afternoon. So I will see you then. And if I don't see you there, have a lovely night, and I'll see you tomorrow.